Plus, enjoy lectures from top professors from around the world. Click on the link in the description below to start your free trial today. The actress kidnapped by Kim Jong-il to make movies for North Korea. The year was 1978, and a freighter was secretly heading from Hong Kong across the East China Sea to Pyongyang, the North Korean capital. On board was a most precious and unusual cargo, the iconic South Korean actress, 52-year-old Cho yun chi who had just been kidnapped by the North Korean Secret Service. Throughout the 1950s and 60s, Choi had been immensely popular in South Korea. She founded a film company with her husband and director, Shin Sang-ok, and made over 130 movies, winning numerous awards including the prestigious Grand Bell Award, which is regarded as the South Korean version of the Oscars. Choi's career suffered after her divorce from Shin. In 1978, in an attempt to revive her now-failing acting career, she flew to Hong Kong to meet with what she thought was a businessman who wanted her involvement in a new film production company he was setting up. When she arrived in Hong Kong, she met the businessman who was named Wang Dong Il and was treated well, eating at luxurious restaurants. But strangely, there was very little business talk. Choi also noticed that there were always strange men following her from a distance taking photos. A few days later, she was greeted by a business associate of Wang named Li Sang Chi, who was accompanied by her daughter. They were to keep Choi entertained while Wang was occupied with a business matter. After some sightseeing and shopping, Choi Yun Chi was lured by Li to Repulse Bay for another potential opportunity to meet a businessman who would help her run a performing academy. But it was a trap, and all of a sudden two men grabbed Choi, sedated her, and bundled her into a speedboat. Choi Yun Chi had been kidnapped by the North Korean Secret Service. So why had this celebrity been kidnapped by the North Korean communist regime? Well, it was on the instruction of the son of the North Korean dictator at the time, Kim Jong-il. It was said he was mad about movies and not only saw their potential for spreading internal propaganda, but also to help promote North Korea and its values overseas. Kim Jong-il is said to have owned over 15,000 films. He particularly liked the James Bond movies and was a big fan of Sean Connery. He wanted to improve the North Korean movie industry, which he saw as full of ideology and dogma. And he was impressed by the movies of capitalist countries, even praising them because of the work ethic behind the industry. To do this, he felt he needed fresh, established talent from the capitalist South, which could transform the stagnant North Korean movie industry. And this became his reasoning for kidnapping Choi. Once Choi had arrived in North Korea after her abduction, Kim Jong-il imprisoned her in isolated, luxurious guarded accommodation. Then he spent the next five years trying to impress and spoil her by taking her to lavish parties, grand government ceremonies, and giving her expensive gifts. She was given a tutor to teach her of the virtues of the North Korean state, and much emphasis was put on showing her the cultural wonders of the regime over the next few years. Choi was taken regularly to operas, musical pageants, museums, and historical landmarks. In the meantime, Choi's ex-husband, Shin sang -ok, a renowned film director with whom she had made some of her best movies with, became worried that he had not heard from his ex-wife for six months, so he decided to fly to Hong Kong to find her. Once there, he too was kidnapped by the North Korean Secret Service, who took him to Pyongyang. But he was treated more harshly and resisted being indoctrinated. After two failed escape attempts, he was put in prison for two years as punishment and tortured. It was not until 1983, during a banquet that Kim threw, that Choi and Shin were reunited by the North Korean regime and became aware they had both been in the same situation, kidnapped five years before. Kim Jong-il insisted they both started making movies together for his regime and demanded they both remarry each other to give the project an air of respectability. It's claimed that he wrote the first movie that Shin was to direct for him, in 1984, called An Emissary of No Return. It was a period drama set in 1907 about a Korean emissary who tries to win Western support against the Japanese occupation of Korea at the time. The movies Choi and Shin made were surprisingly varied, though most had an anti-Japanese or anti-capitalist undertone to them, such as 1985's moralizing fantasy musical The Tale of Shim Chong, in the same year, Shin made his last and most expensive North Korean movie. This was called Pugasari. It did not star Choi and was about a Godzilla-type creature running amok. 
A Japanese crew who had worked on Godzilla created the special effects after being tricked into thinking they were working on a Chinese movie. Overall, the movies the pair produced for the North Korean regime were cheap and poorly made, though one of the films, the 1985's Salt, did receive some acclaim. Choi won the Best Actress Award for it at the 14th Moscow International Film Festival, and it also got surprisingly good reviews by international critics. Then, after nearly 10 years of being in North Korea, the couple managed to give their bodyguards the slip. On their way back from attending the 1986 Berlin Film Festival, they stopped in Vienna, Austria, where they escaped to the U.S. Embassy to request political asylum. For decades, the U.S. government was aware of the problem with North Korea abducting people. It's estimated that at least several hundred people have been kidnapped since 1953, though some sources claim the true figure is as high as 3,800 people. It's theorized that North Korea did this for a number of reasons, but chiefly to steal people's identities and get them to teach North Korean intelligence officers the customs and languages of their native countries. Choi and Shin were both granted asylum and lived quietly in America until 1999. Choi never made any films ever again afterwards. But in 1992, Shin did make the low-budget American martial arts comedy Three Ninjas Knuckle Up under the name of Simon Sheen, although it was a commercial flop. Eventually, they felt it was safe enough to return to South Korea. On their return, Choi was treated with much reverence and nostalgia that in 2014, she was awarded by the Order of Cultural Merit. A big thank you to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring the Simple History Channel. The Great Courses Plus is a subscription on-demand video learning service where you can enjoy lectures from top professors from around the world. These courses stream to your TV, tablet, laptop, or phone through any web browser or available apps. The Great Courses Plus will feed your hunger for more history with its vast collection of history video lectures from the Middle Ages to Napoleon to the war in Iraq. There are also other subjects, science, fine art, literature, and language, mathematics, and more. If you like this episode, then you might like Utopia and Terror in the 20th Century, taught by Professor Vejas Gabriel Lulevicius, PhD. The lecture looks at many regimes of the last century, fascist Italy, the USSR, Pol Pot's Cambodia, and more throughout the course. Episode 20, East Germany, the Soviet Union, North Korea, gives you an insight into the Kim Dynasty and how they operated the North Korean regime. Get started with The Great Courses Plus and use our special offer free trial by clicking the link in the description below or by going to the